my name is Rain and I've been going to Glastonbury Festival my entire life and I thought I'd share some tips I hope you find useful if you're going for the first time or even if you've been going for a while. This is quite a long detailed guide so I'm cutting out most of the stuff that applies to most festivals like phone chargers, wellies, baby wipes, you know, all that sort of thing. Uh, yes, it is long and detailed but uh, here we go! Right, so before the festival even starts, they release the lineup and then eventually the times so you can schedule yourself before you even go. I love my planner, but electronic stuff is uh, easier to carry around, it shows what clashes better. Do a quick scan of the lineup, picking up the names of bands you already know you like, put them down. Then I like to go and copy and paste the band names into YouTube and see if I like those. I try and do this for Pyramid, Other and the stages that I know plays music I like, so for me that's Avalon and Avalon Cafe. And then I put all of those in. Once I do that, I just go through picking random band names I like from the main, the rest of the main stages. Now I don't actually delete my clashing bands. I put them all in. So when I'm actually in the festival, I can assess the weather, my location, the situation I'm in, and I can see oh that this band is also playing at this time over here. So I can change stuff depending on the situation. That's another thing, if you do like a particular band and you want to find out every time they're playing, you can do that thing where you do like command F and then type their name in and see it all. Sometimes my mum goes on e-festivals and finds a forum recommending music that she likes, like pirate punk or something, uh, and then she finds bands from there and then tells me. <laughs> I think really discovering bands is one of my favourite things to do at this festival. Oh, and also, don't forget to look at the cabaret lineup because you might not recognise the names, but if you search them, you might recognise their voice or face from telly or like, you know, Radio 4 stuff. <laughs> Honestly, every time they announce headliners for the festival, I think, oh, there's nothing for me, and then I end up getting really busy and I just don't know what I'm going to do. And I really wanted to see that, but then this, and then I saw them last year, and will they do the same thing as last year? I don't know. To enjoy your live music experience more, it's pretty cool to do a playlist before the festival of just to get yourself prepared, learn the lyrics, know when to dance, that sort of thing. Okay, um, I'm at my local entrance, the Villagers Gate, where uh, there's lots of work being done, which I didn't think about when I came here. Okay, so I'm here at the entrance to tell you uh, about stuff that you need to be aware of before you enter the site. Um, hi. <laughs> So the first thing is glass is banned from the site. Don't bring any glass with you. I checked to see what else is banned. Uh, gazebos and uh, lanterns are banned. Other thing before you enter, uh, when you go in, uh, look for the person giving out a Yo Valley bag. There's a different Glastonbury Festival related design each year. <laughs> They're really handy to put your free magazine program thing that they give you in. Uh, also look for a policeman. They have a limited amount, but they do give out like uh, collapsible water bottle things and um, so, sort of safety phone carriers, which are pretty handy. So yes, this is what the bag looks like. Um, this one is from 2009. Uh, and then it's got the Yo Valley thing at the back. And then this is what the phone thing I meant that the police gave my dad. You put your phone in it and then you just thread it through, something like your belt loop, stick this in your pocket, it falls out, it's attached. If you're in a family, there are two family camping fields for you. One is called Wicket Ground, and the other is called Family Camping. Wicket Ground is quieter but further away from the rest of the festival, and uh, Family Camping is the one that's my favourite. It's one where I grew up in, <laughs> I frequented. It's right above the kids' field, and it's closer to the main parts of the festival site. However, it does fill up really quickly. Now these fields are meant for families, they're meant to be quiet after a time that kids go to sleep and there's not meant to be anyone lingering around your tent at like 11pm laughing loudly. <laughs> but people do camp in the, those fields anyway and take up space and room and be noisy. So there's lots of reasons you've got to try and get there quickly to beat everyone else. I'm afraid that if you aren't going to be there on a Wednesday then you probably won't find a place in the family camping one, but Wicked Ground might still have some spaces available if you get there on Thursday. 
If you have a long way to go to your preferred site, you could use a trolley, a garden trolley. Uh, they're good for carrying your stuff around the site if you go shopping, and also for children with tired feet and you still got places to go. But you might want to forgo that tip because as of 2017, they're going to start doing a new security thing where they put have a separate queue for people with more luggage, which is probably going to take longer than the others. The other, I should say. Yeah, and when the weather is shitty, it's better to try and camp up on a hill if possible because of you know the rain and you don't want to be at the bottom where it all goes down. Now drainage is like a hundred times better since the you know the great flood of um oh five. The great I think it's the great flood of oh five. So once a tent is set up uh, it could be really hard to find it again afterwards. Uh, so you could do something like set up a flagpole with a unique flag on it or just maybe count how many bins on the right side up from the information van and is on that right. Something like that <laughs> rather than just leaving it. <laughs> So when it comes to tent security, I don't want to be responsible for any outdated information. Uh, there'll probably be something about it in your programs that you get, but there are places walking about and I believe they have a spot by pyramid stage. They'll know what the best situation is. Oh, and uh, one thing before I move on, it doesn't quite fit into the entering part of my plan, um, but uh, if you have kids, something my mum did for me and my sister was she got a piece of paper and wrote her phone number on it and my dad's phone number on it put it in our guides, again, that you get when you enter, and we wore those all the time, every single day, in case we got lost. Um, yeah, so that might be something that you want to do too. If you, if you manage to arrive on Wednesday, then now's a really good opportunity to experience all of the things you won't get a chance to when the music starts on Friday. I like to go to the markets on Wednesdays. On Thursday, sometimes the kids' field opens up and the circus fields, and there's different parts that are open on Thursday. Or oh, there's the healing fields, and then, you know, when Friday and the music starts, you won't, you'll be too busy to experience it. Now, if you're there for Wednesday night, there's an opening ceremony at 9 o'clock in the Stone Circle field. Uh, there's some fireworks, a bonfire, and usually some sort of performance. Um, now I said 9, but it's usually more like 10 o'clock beyond is when it really starts. They're always late. However, I would try and get there early because spaces in that field do tend to fill up. Also, on your way up, uh, make sure to grab uh, food if you are non-vegan and non-spice. If you like spicy food and you like meat, then you've got like a couple of fields of just spicy food and non-meat. Toilets, the toilets are closest to the uh, stone circle fields, I'd get really busy about that time. Also, I think the nearest cider place is actually West Holt stage area, so you've got a while to go if you wanna go pop back and get cider. And if you don't like crowds, leave the ceremony early because it's what feels like the whole of the festival trying to exit the field from two exits and it takes forever. <laughs> Now about seating, uh, I've been using this folding chair thing since, um, yeah, 2012. That's really good if you like back support because you sit on it like this and then this gets muddy. Your bum doesn't, you've got some back support. Uh, if you are going to bring like proper camping chairs and you're sitting in a tent uh, situation, uh, it'd be really nice of you if you stay near the back so that way uh, people could see the stage, they would have to stand up and get all the seating area muddy and uh, bring it further forward and yeah, also the same kind of applies for a uh, pyramid stage, it's nice to go at the top of the hill rather than in the front but you'll get better view sitting at the top of the hill anyway. Um, except, you know, if there are a billion flag wavers waving their stupid unoriginal flags in front of the screens and the stage so nobody sees because even at the front all you can see are just poles blocking your vision sorry another rant okay now food is very expensive here i mean three meals a day let's say seven pound fifty for a week is uh kind of what is it yeah 115 pounds ish and that's just food without treats like donuts and cider <laughs> so just a warning okay and I'm here again at my entrance 
but it's also an exit to tell you that if you ever need to leave the site, make sure you grab a pass out so you can come back into the site and don't lose it or forget it when you come back. I mean, it's me relevant for me as a villager, but also if you just need to go get something from your car. Uh, I think that's it for me here. All right, bye. Uh, okay, another family parent tip thing. I'm sorry. Uh, I think this might be the last one. It's just that this has been my experience at the festival, so I've got a lot of these. Um, there's more than just the kids field. When you go into Greenpeace, they have a whole area called the Greenpeace Kids, and they've got a, whole, a climbing frame and they do workshops and other nice cool stuff from uh, around there. So uh, last year they introduced these um, metal cups uh, that you sort of have a rent system with it. Uh, you buy them from like some bars in the park and water aid uh, for five pounds. But if you return it, then you get the five pounds back. But they they make really nice souvenirs. So I don't know if they're going to be uh, introduced more widely because it was only on like an experimental basis that they did it last year. Uh, we'll see. If you're 18 or look under 25, you can go to one of the storage lockup places, show them your ID. They'll give you a special band that says we've seen your ID, you're over 18 and then you can show that to every bar you go to to be like I'm, I am I can drink pl please so you don't have to get your you know, your driver's license out every single time which is a hassle and bigger risk of you dropping it and losing it so there's that and now just a quick rundown of hygiene stuff yeah like I said normal festival stuff applies there'll be huge amount of queues in the mornings to brush your teeth so maybe have a bottle of water by your tent to wash your hair and brush your teeth with there are showers in the greenpeace fields by the kids field and if it's really muddy the uh shepton mallet swimming pool lido area will open up their showers to festival goers but uh, i don't think that's happened in a couple of years and it's quite a trek to get to hand sanitizer uh, they've been gradually getting rid of sinks and uh, depending on where you are and when it is, you, there might not be any hand sanitizer left, so it's good to have some of your own. Okay, toilet paper. Uh, don't carry a whole roll because it could get damaged and they're kind of expensive to get from the general store. But you should still carry a lot because someone in your group will have forgotten it. And also, they've been gradually replacing port loos with long drops over the last couple of years. And people do this thing that you don't do for any other situation where they put their muddy feet on either side of the seat and then hover, spraying piss and mud and whatever else everywhere. So then you've got to walk in and then you've got to get use up like half of your toilet roll just to wipe it all off so you can sit down. And it's nobody, like, what are the situation? Like, it's a normal fucking toilet. Just use it as a normal fucking toilet, please. I get angry about this. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, last long drop related tip, um, uh, there's no hooks to put your bags on, but if you use the latch that closes the door, you can, before you, before you put it in, you can hook your bag on it and then do this. Uh, that way your stuff gets kept off the muddy ground and it's kind of like an extra security for your, the door not just suddenly unlatching and opening. Yeah, and that little clip is one that my mum recorded when she went in last night, so thank you, mum. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to go into a couple of my personal recommendations or preferences of what I like to do during this time. Uh, opposite the green field, there's an entrance to this cool garden area. There's a cafe, but it's really pretty, and I, I really like going there. I absolutely adore the Big Top and Circus fields. I There is stuff there that you can't see anywhere else. I, I went to see Circus of Horrors and I'd seen like by far better stuff at Glastonbury which for like free kind of. Now if you're in the stone circle field looking up at the stone circle then you see to the left there's a tree. If you go from that tree left down you'll go in and you'll see a really nice statue of a dragon that uh, I don't want to too much detail of because it'd be quite a cool surprise if you don't know what's there. Okay when Sunday or Monday rolls around it's time to leave. Okay uh, I'm gonna tell you how to pop to pop down on a pop-up tent. Um, I have not done this in a while but I will tell you how to do it. 
Okay. <laughs> right. So you have your tent. Take these two sides. You take these two sides. You put it like this. Then you kind of fold it into the middle. <laughs> once, it's, once it's upright, fold it down, right down. <laughs> this side goes down. Now the ground sheet side has got to be up when you before you fold it. And it goes over. And then you tighten it all up. Until it feet fits on the sheet. <laughs> Done. Done. <laughs> Thank you for helping. That's okay. And there we go. I totally did that all by myself. I definitely remembered how to do it. Now try and take everything you can, put your rubbish in the right bins. If the bins are full, put it in a bag next to the bins. Take out all of your tent pegs when you leave because they'll choke the animals when they graze there. It's the same reason why lanterns are banned and you just, you don't want to hurt the animals. And also one more thing really, I don't recommend leaving your tent, but if you do, it's leave the tent flap open so the volunteers know that they can go in and pack it down and take it away faster than in a couple of weeks time yeah right that's it for me I can't go into any more detail because then this video will be even longer um, maybe I'll do another one in the future I don't know uh, I hope that you found something here useful they're not like m massive tips and more like little things but I don't know I hope that they are useful for you uh, for more information, there's forums like eFestival and uh, Glastonbury Chat. Um, my mum has been blogging for years and she's compiling all of the Glastonbury Festival posts into one post, including more tips. Uh, if you're staying around the area, then a couple of years ago, no, it was only last year, <laughs> I made two videos on uh, tourist tips for Glastonbury High Street and my favourite shops. If you want you might want to see that if you're gonna be hanging around um hmm. yeah thanks for watching my very long video i hope this helps enjoy your festival bye